Albania has held a parliamentary election on Sunday, likely to be a neck-and-neck -neck contest between the ruling socialists and the position as corruption weighs heavily on voters in one of Europe's poorest nations. The Socialist Party PS of Prime Minister Edi Rama is seeking a third term, while Luzum Habash's Democratic Party wants a return to power eight years after losing an election. Albanians headed to the polls on Sunday to vote in an election heavily focused on corruption in one of Europe's poorest nations. The vote will likely be neck and neck between Prime Minister Edi Rama, a 56-year-old painter and former basketball player seeking his third term with the Socialist PS party, and 46-year-old lawyer and former mayor of the capital, Lulzim Basha, whose Democratic PD party is hoping to return to power after eight years. <laughs> Albania has a population of 2.8 million, but 3.6 million voters due to its large diaspora. The country has a history of violence and fraud allegations during elections in the three decades since the end of communism. On Wednesday, a PS supporter was killed and four people wounded during a shootout after a dispute between socialist and Democrat supporters. Voters like Katrina Stefani are eager for an end to widespread corruption. I don't want to end up in a dictatorship. I feel that I live in a regime. With everything that has happened in the past few days and years, I feel that we are under dictatorship in a totalitarian regime. Albania ranked 104 out of 180 countries for corruption on the Transparency International list in 2020. It's been accused by the United States of being a major source for marijuana production and other drug shipments. The country was granted European Union candidate status in 2014, but there has been little progress due to the bloc's fatigue with expansion and a lack of reforms within Albania. The new government will now have to deal with the coronavirus pandemic and rebuilding homes after a 2019 earthquake killed 51 people and damaged more than 11,000 properties. Turkey's presidential spokesman says U.S. President Joe Biden's declaration that the massacres of Armenians in the Ottoman Empire constituted genocide is simply outrageous and they will respond in various ways over the coming months. Well, first of all, the statement by the U.S. president is very unfortunate, unfair. We completely reject it, condemn it. Uh, it is not supported by historical facts. Uh, it has no legal basis. And... Uh, Politically speaking, it's an irresponsible, uh, uh, um, unconstructive uh, statement. Uh, it doesn't help any of the processes that we are involved in, including uh, our attempts to normalize relations with Armenia in the Caucasus after the liberation of Karabakh. <coughs> um, and of course, this will certainly have uh, uh, an impact on U.S.-Turkish relations. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.